Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff Goldberg for the Sales Pro Network. It is March 25th, a Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm the founder of the Sales Pro Network. I am a sales coach and trainer, and I work with both individuals and organizations to give them more confidence and help them sell more effectively and achieve measurable and sustainable sales increases. I founded the Sales Pro Network as a place where sales professionals like you can come and ask questions, get great coaching and advice from wonderful people who are happy to help, and really to elevate the profession of sales and help you make more money. And every Friday at 10 a.m., we do a live interview with someone who can add value to the profession of sales. This is both a vlogcast and a podcast. If you're listening live, please do say hello in the comments. And if you didn't connect your Facebook account to StreamYard, please do say who you are. And if you're watching on the replay, please put replay in. And if you have any questions for our guest today, stick those in the comments too, and we'll get to those. And with that, it's my pleasure to bring you once again, a fantastic guest who can really add value to us. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Aaron Antelon. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. It's so good to be with you in the audience, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me on. I look forward to today. Me too. I'm really excited about this because I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I know what you, your main thing uh, is that you talk about, and I'm really fascinated by it. And I've, uh, uh, I actually, uh, I, I don't want to give away anything. We'll, we'll get to that. But before we get sure. started, maybe could you give us the two to three minute version of your past in history? What brought you up to this point? Well, that's a great, great question. What brought me up to this point was that I had founded two businesses and also a nonprofit. And I was having the same issues that were taking place in my businesses as well as my nonprofit. The issues were that we were acquiring new clients, new contacts, but as fast as that we were acquiring them, we were on television, like I was sharing with you, we had a national television program that uh, was airing us all over the country. We had different ads that were going out. We were able to acquire these clients, but as quickly as we were able to acquire them, they were going out the back door. The frustration built up, the disappointment, the discouragement, of course, rose because I was looking at this and saying, I have a product and a service that everyone needs, but for whatever reason, I'm missing this connection opportunity. Then that's whenever I discovered this system that we're going to talk about today. And it's enabled me now to just in the past six years, probably quadruple my impact, my influence, and my income through serving more people. And so I'm excited today to be able to share this with you. That's great. Yeah, it's crucial not only to attain new customers, but if you can't retain them, then you're constantly on that, that treadmill, always looking for new prospects. And of course, even when you have a bunch of great clients, you still need to prospect at least a little bit and continually add because you're going to lose some clients no matter what, but you sure don't want them coming in and going out the back door immediately. Right. Yep. Uh, somebody said, good morning, Jeff and Aaron. Uh, again, if you didn't connect your Facebook account to StreamYard, all this says is hey. Facebook user. So good morning to you too. And good morning, Keith Ginsburg, who says disc rules. We'll talk about hey. this in a while. So we already gave it away. <laughs> well, let, 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 before we get to that, let, let's talk about uh, what, what, what do you, you're, you're, I, you and I spoke er, uh, earlier, uh, you know, to, to put this thing together and you're, you're a passionate guy. What are you most passionate about? I'm most passionate about empowering other business professionals and leaders to accelerate three things that we all want accelerated our impact our influence and our income and we do this through different events we do this through a lot of coaching uh through coaching engagements but i'm passionate about serving the business professional and seeing that they're able to gain and retain not just any client, but their dream client. Mm. And where does that passion come from? That passion comes through that place of serving. That passion comes from that place. I guess you would say the passion was birthed out of the hurt and the disappointment that I experienced. And so since I was able to crack that code, you know, once you crack a code and once you identify, I heard Les Brown say this, there is no secret to success. There's a system to success. And once you find the system, 
that cracks the code, then you want to share that system with everyone that you come in contact with. Absolutely. And you just mentioned a name that I love, Les Brown. Guys, if you have not if not listened to Les Brown, he is one of the great motivational speakers of, of all time. Just fantastic. And uh, let's see. Happy Friday from Heidi Felix. Good morning, Heidi. Good, good to see you. Somebody said, good morning, Jeff. Jerry Marlowe, good morning to you, my friend. Uh, Aaron, uh, I'm not sure if you want to talk about this, but I know that you're, you were also a pastor for 13 years. And uh, I don't think I ever saw a pastor with a haircut like that. What, what was that hey. like? And why, <laughs> what was that like? And why did you leave the ministry? Well, that's a great question. I'm often asked this. Uh, I don't say that I left the ministry. What I say is that I've increased my expansion. The big thing was is that as we aired nationally on television for eight years out of the 13 years that I pastored a church, I would get invitations to go and speak in some of the most recognized conferences all over the country. And for the first few years, I would deny the invitation because I would say, I cannot be effective pastoring the people in my congregation if I'm always away speaking at other events and other places. And so I received a revelation. I just kind of heard this voice. I don't know if any of you kind of hear an inward voice, but I heard this inward voice and that's where I birthed this event. Do you want to accelerate your impact? Do you want to accelerate your influence? And do you want to accelerate your income? And I responded, certainly. And I believe it could have been self-talk. But I think I I think it was it was the voice of God asking me that question, really identifying where I'm at. And so whenever I answered that certainly, I really felt the pull and the tug and the shift from leave to leave the four walls of the church to now go into corporations into public settings we do a lot of a lot of events with government officials i've spoke with the dallas independent school district with their executive team in different levels of executive teams to help them accelerate their impact, their influence, and their income. Wow. So I don't consider myself leaving the ministry. I just consider myself increasing the reach of my ministry. I got it. And, and I, I know that among other things, you offer a webinar for, for ministers to teach them how to increase church attendance and finances. How, yeah. how, do, you, how do ministers do that? By learning this system. Ah. <laughs> By learning this system that we're going to go through uh, pretty quickly. Perfect. Okay, we'll, yes. we'll get there in a second. Good morning, Jeff Claire. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, let, let's talk sales because that's what we're all sure. about here. What, what do you find to be the biggest challenge facing salespeople today? You know, that's a great question. You know, I really find that salespeople, we have, we have the passion to go and sell to individuals according to our unique personality style. I'm very driven, decisive, determined, and motivated to get results, to get the job done. Let's get to the bottom line. But not all of our buyers or all of our clients or all of our prospects are wired like me. I'll give you an example. I don't know if any of you watched season two of Undercover Billionaire. That's the one with Grant Cardone in that. If you if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to go to Discovery Plus and download that. It'll be well worth your time. But I'm watching this and Grant Cardone, those of you that know Grant, he's very driven, decisive, in your face, very determined to get the job done. And he goes into a new territory, Pueblo, Colorado, has a disguise, shaves his head, and he's looking to build a million dollar business within 90 days. He doesn't have any of his contacts. All he has is a hundred dollars and a truck. And so Grant Cardone in this, in this series, he misses out on buying a multi-unit apartment complex that would have brought him $10 million because he was 
selling the proposal according to his own personality style. He was very driven, decisive, talked very firm, very loud, big gestures. Whenever he spoke to the to the to the seller, he spoke in the sell in his according to the his style, but the seller was very reserved and laid back. So he continued to nudge the seller. I need an answer. I need an answer by tomorrow at noon. Are you going to do this deal or not? And he got the reply. And the reply was from the seller that they went with another buyer. Not because the offer was better, but because there was a disconnect in the style. The seller said he's too pushy. How many times, Jeff, how many times person you're watching, salesperson that you're watching, have you missed out on the opportunity, not just to sell to a prospect, but how many times have we missed out on opportunities to serve a client or a prospect because we are speaking our style and we miss the opportunity to effectively connect with the prospect. You know, I believe this and Maxwell, John Maxwell wrote a book, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. I believe that every person does communicate, but we miss that opportunity to connect with others because of the way that we're wired. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm passionate about helping sales professionals learn the basic styles and the basic needs, the motivation, the buying persona of different the different personality styles so that way we can make the necessary adjustments in order to effectively serve our prospect who will become client. And that's the way we not only get them in the door, but that's the way we close the back door. And mm. I believe that that works in any and every industry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you used a word a couple of times already now that I, I love, and that's the word serve. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, about a gazillion years ago, I've been in sales 48 years now. Uh, and I saw Zig, I was fortunate enough to see Zig Ziglar on a stage while he nice. was still alive. And Zig said that the word sell comes from the Swedish word selja, S-E-L-J-E, which means to serve. Now, I'm actually the kind of guy that looks up something like that. It does not translate to to serve, but I still like the idea <laughs> that sales is about service. It's not about pushing your widget or your service or your product on somebody or putting square pegs in round holes. It's truly coming from a place of how can I best help you? And if I can't, I'll tell you before you have to tell me. Truly desiring to help. It's if you have, I like the term commission breath, prospects can smell that. But when you truly want to help people, they can tell that too. But I like your example of uh, Cardone, you know, not, and look, it's, it's, it would be hard. You may not like the guy and I'm not a huge fan in particular, but, but he's incredibly successful and very effective. And it's interesting to find that even a highly successful guy like him is blowing a deal because he didn't realize that somebody was not the same style as him and saw him, I'm assuming as too pushy. And look Not at this. Afterwards, the camera comes on him and he's still oblivious to why he lost the deal. How many times has the door been shut on our face? Has the phone been hung up on us? And then we don't learn from that particular situation. See, experience is not the best teacher evaluated experience is the best teacher. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you know, go ahead. We can go back and evaluate that experience or maybe even look at experiences that we've encountered that the phone has been hung up on us or that the door has been shut on us. And I would say chances are, if I'm a betting man, I'm not, but if I were a betting man, I would say probably 95% was because we failed to effectively connect with that individual's personality style. Yeah. And, and we didn't what, make that adjustment. 
Yeah, wh while so many things have changed over my career, which is almost 50 years now, certain things have not changed a bit. And one of them, I believe, is that people still do business with people that they both like and trust, the trust yes. being the more important part. And if you are coming off in a way that seems pushy or aggressive, uh, then people aren't going to trust you. They think there's something behind it. Good morning, Lisa Linker. She says, good morning, Jeff and Aaron. Hey, um, you morning. have an ebook called uh, Three Secrets to Gain and Retain Your Dream Clients. And in that ebook, you say there's an actual system to both gain and retain your dream clients. Now, when I saw that, I said, I'm interested. So can you tell us a little bit about the secrets? Absolutely. We identify the styles of the individual that we're looking to serve. Some individuals are more outgoing, while some are more reserved. You and I, we share the common trait. We share the common ground is that we're both outgoing. We like to do things the fast way. And while some are also more task-oriented, it's all about the role, the result, the job to be done, while others are more about people more people oriented. It's all about sharing, caring, building relationships. One isn't better than the other, but the secret to gain and retain your dream client is to identify the style of the individual. Are they more outgoing or reserved? That's the first thing we identify. Are they more task oriented or more people oriented? Now that's a little bit tougher to identify. I found kind of a, a, a hole, an opportunity whenever I ask questions to be able to identify that particular, are they more task oriented or people oriented? The way that I identify this is I will ask an individual, what do you think? How do you feel? And if I were to ask you, Jeff, what do you think? How do you feel? How what would be your response? What do I think and how do I feel? I think quickly and I feel passionately. Okay, but you start with think. So thinkers, and not saying that people oriented don't think, but thinkers, whenever you get the response, well, I think that this is the way to go, or I feel that this is the way to go. Thinkers tend to lean towards the task side while feelers tend to lean towards the people side. So when you identify if they're more outgoing or reserved, that's the first thing. And the second thing, when you identify if they're more task oriented or people oriented, then you're able to see the model or the system of human behavior. Those that are more outgoing and task oriented are our dominant style. They like to do things the fast way. Their body language is big gestures. We lean forward. We're very direct. We're very to the point. We're very driven. When we're selling to these individuals, what we need to do is that we need to be brilliant. We need to be to the point, be brief, and be gone. I don't know if there's anyone here, or Jeff, you and I could talk about this. If you've ever been in uh, or received a proposal, whether it's been over the phone, whether it's been in person or even a written proposal, and there are so many details within that proposal, that is a great method for a particular personality style, but it's not the best method for the dominant style, those that are more brief to the point be gone. So we miss out on that opportunity to connect. Whenever I receive these long emails, whenever I receive all these details, details are important, but I tend to send them to my administrator. I want to I strangle agree. the people who send me those. <laughs> <laughs> to, in fact, as you were talking about the, all the details in the proposal, I'm going, I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to skim it. I don't have the time. So that brilliant. See, when we're selling to these individuals that are dominant, that are outgoing and task oriented, they buy because they want respect and they want results. So whenever you're giving them a proposal, whenever you're presenting your product or your service 
to them. Let them know what's in it for them. Let them know how it's going to enable them to gain the respect and get the results. It's all about the bottom line. Let's move on. So we have the outgoing task oriented. We also have the outgoing people oriented. They like to do things the fun way. If you're going to connect with them, it might be a good idea to take them to a ball game. It might be a good idea to take them somewhere fun, take them to a bowling alley, take them to some a place Meet them at a place that is going to be high energy because that is their style. Remember, everyone communicates, but very few people connect. In order for us to effectively connect with these individuals, we have to remember they do things the fun way. They're flashy. They're trendy. They're very talkative. Now, the secret to connecting with them in gaining and retaining them as a client is that you understand that they buy products and services because of admiration and recognition. Let them know how this is going to increase their exposure. Hmm. One of the things that you can do, this is just a tip, is let them know who else, maybe somebody that they admire, who else that they admire has purchased the same product, the same service that you're offering. So now we have the reserve people oriented individuals. These are individuals that are more soft, uh, soft tone, slower pace, but it's all about relationships. They do things the traditional way. Their body language is very gentle, gentle gestures. When you're connecting with them, use warm conversational tones. A lot of times they prefer listening than talking. So when they buy products and services, they buy in order to support an individual business. They do things the supportive way. When you're presenting to them, show sincere appreciation. If you notice, I kind of changed my tone now. I've softened my gestures. Look them, they're the ones that need to be looked in the eye and soft smile. Let them know how much you appreciate them and how by buying your product and service is going to enable them to serve other people in a more practical way. Now we have the reserved task oriented individuals. These individuals do things the proper way. They're very in the box. They're highly detailed. They, you won't get a whole lot of emotions a lot of smiling. You won't get a lot of gestures from these individuals. So when you're connecting with them and you're selling your product and your service, they buy based on the excellence of the product, based on the level that they trust you and based on your integrity. So they're going to ask the question, why, why? 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 You know, prior to knowing and understanding this system, I used to be taken back by the excessive whys. And I would wonder, why are they challenging me? I would see it as they're challenging me. They don't trust me. See, they don't ask the question why because of a lack of trust. They lack, they ask the question why because they want to be really, really clear on the details. They're very highly detailed. Whenever you're submitting a proposal to them, you need to submit a very detailed proposal. You have to come prepared and your presentation needs to be well put together in order to effectively connect with these individuals. 
And when we use this system, when we use this system, this system is a proven system that when we use it, it will not only enable us to acquire our dream clients, mm. so, but it will enable us to retain our dream clients. Yeah, let's not keep people waiting any longer because somebody already asked, good morning, Steve Sapato. Uh, and I'm gonna toss you a, a softball here. If only there was some tool that we could use to figure out which type of personality our prospects have. Do yeah. you know of anything like that? Absolutely. <laughs> We have assessments, but but I here's here's a simple way, because it would be pretty odd that you're you're gonna uh, we're gonna meet for lunch and you're a prospect and I would say well before I meet you Jeff do you mind if I send you over this personality assessment you're gonna say well, what in the world I'm not gonna do that here's the indicators you first identify are they more outgoing or more reserved. A lot of times you can identify that even in an email. All caps, a lot of exclamation points. That's probably someone that is more outgoing. A lot of details. It's probably someone that's more reserved. So the first indicator is outgoing. Are they more outgoing or more reserved? The second identifier is are they more task driven or people driven the indicator even in email even in a conversation even in voicemails you can identify the pace of the individual but this is the one that's a little bit tougher to identify so you look you look and identify some some of the key components there you want to get a feel for their admiration for people. Well, happy Friday. It's a great day today. That's probably someone that is looking to connect on a personal level. So you might have that indication that they're more people oriented. So those that are more outgoing and task driven, those are your dominant personality style. That's the D. Predominant style, that is the D. Those that are more outgoing and people oriented. I wish that I could share with you a circle that that uh, helps identify this diagram that I have. But it's in our ebook. You you would get this in our ebook that we're going to give you for free. Aaron, uh, would it help if I share my my profile? Sure, absolutely. There you go, my friend. So what we're talking about is the DISC assessment tool. Why don't you just explain to everybody what is DISC? And that's what you've been talking about. And uh, this, is, this is my actual profile. DISC is the tool, is a system that we use that has been a proven tool. You know, one of the things somebody has said, well, is it trusted? I said, well, the designer, the creator of DISC, his name's William Marston, and his name might not ring a bell. But William Marston also designed a tool that holds up in court. It's called the polygraph test or the lie detector test. And the assessments that we administer through our organization, we just got back from ASI that they scored between an 85 and a 90 percent percent accuracy rate. If you're a betting man, you're probably going to bet on those odds of accuracy. So the outgoing task oriented individual is the dominant, the outgoing people-oriented individual is predominantly the inspiring or the I, the reserved people-oriented individual is predominantly the S, and the reserved task-oriented is predominantly the C. One of the things that we do teach, Jeff, is that we really are a blend of all four. We really are a blend of all four, but some of us have a stronger capacity, a higher capacity to where it's most natural to us to operate in the D, the I, the S, and the C. My capacity, what's most natural to me is to operate as a D, and I would say that that's probably the same for you, Jeff. Would you not agree? That's what my disc profile says, that's for sure. And in fact, uh, first of all, good morning, Ben Gibbs. Always good to see you. Lisa Linker says, no surprise, Jeff is a D. And Keith, hey. Keith Ginsburg says, Jeff, are you a high D? So uh, 
am I a high D? And what, is, what does that tell you about me and how is that useful? What that, what that says is that you like to get things done quick to the point. You want me to be brilliant and let's get done. So I would be surprised if this podcast would run over 40 minutes. You want to get to the point and you want to get it done. You want results. It's all about results. Let me give you the, the basic needs for each just right quick. The dominant, the D's want results. Just like a fish needs water and we need air, D's need results. I's need recognition. S's need relationships, trusting, caring, valuable relationships. C's, they need the right answer, the right system, the right tool that is a proven framework that is guaranteed to not fail. When you're leading each of the four styles, when you're selling to them, if they're in your family, you give them that secret fuel. You give them that basic need. And I promise you will effectively connect with them in whatever environment, whatever situation that you're working, whether it's personal or professional. Yeah, there, there is zero doubt that I like to get things done quick. I talk quick. I think quick. I do everything quick. I, I want, I don't like wasting time. I, I want, I want, if I'm having fun, let's have fun. But when we're working, let's get the job done. Let's get it done. Crazy when other people aren't like that. But um, one of the things that you identify with the disc profile, the disc assessment tool is that um, everybody has their own communication style and their yeah. own basic needs. And each salesperson has their own unique personality and their own style. So yeah. are salespeople supposed to change who they are when they're trying to sell? And if so, isn't that manipulative? It's not manipulative. It's in order to effectively connect. It's in order to effectively serve. It can't, I have been asked this question numerous times. You express, so I'll go in that route. You've expressed that I was a pastor and I do train and develop pastors that lead major churches all over the country. And so they ask this, is that manipulation? It can be because really you have the answers to the test. You have an inside track to know but it depends on the motive of your own heart. One of the things I say is, know what, since you have the answers, lead from a place of integrity. So sell from a place of, of integrity in order to effectively serve your prospect, your client. Yeah, if you don't have integrity, first of all, get out of sales. And you know, we, we suffer from a very bad reputation in sales, yeah. which is really one of the reasons that I founded the Sales Pro Network to elevate the profession of sales. We, we all know the, uh, the stereotype of the used car salesperson who supposedly sure. they'll do and say anything, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll steal. And I, I happen to know more than one used car salesperson who's very good at what they do and highly uh, ha has great integrity, but there is that stereotype. And uh, we we suffer from that uh, that not just with used car salespeople but with salespeople in general people tend to not trust us because they think our job is to reach our hand into their pocket take out those green pieces of paper with pictures of dead presidents on them and put them in our own pockets and yeah. in truth at the end of the day that is what we're trying to do but when we come from a place of service and truly coming from if i can help you i will and if i'm not right i'm not going to try to that's the integrity I believe you're speaking of having the, having the right come from, I'm, I'm pointing to my, my gut saying the right come from, which again, for me is always, how can I best serve you? That yes. that's my entire goal. Uh, well, not my entire goal. I want to create rapport and all that stuff, but in the sales process, all I'm really trying to find out is how can I best help you? Yeah. And I'll actually ask that question to my prospects. I, I, I use what I call the Jeff Goldberg School of Direct Sales. Now, direct sales typically means face-to-face -face as opposed to inside sales, which is over the phone. But I mean, just be direct. Say what's on your mind, which I would guess means I am a high D because that's the type of person who does that. <laughs> Don't beat around the bush with me. Just give me the bottom line. Get to the point. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, you know, I, I've 
manage salespeople. I, I've managed, I've coached, I've sold, I've trained for, you know, almost 50 years. And anybody who's ever worked for me as a salesperson will tell you that if you, if you ask them, what's it like to work for Jeff? I promise you a hundred percent of them will say, well, when you're talking to him, you better get to the bottom line pretty quickly. Cause if not, he's going to interrupt you because he doesn't have the patience. And the truth is I don't, it makes me crazy. And while I don't have the patience, I have learned to bite the insides of my cheeks because some people need more patience than others. I don't need a lot of patience from somebody because I'm impatient too, but I have come to learn the hard way over the years that some people just, they don't talk as fast as me and they don't think as fast as me and they need more time to process and they need a little more feely than I do where I want, give me the facts and get out. So the disc assessment, so how, how does somebody learn to actually figure out quickly, you gave us a couple of examples, but how do we learn, where would we go to learn how to quickly uh, quickly identify uh, what somebody's personality style is so that we can speak to them in a way that works for them, not just for us? Well, one of the things that I will do to those that are interested, I will provide a free uh, tool that I've done, uh, a master class, and no cost to your audience. I typically sell that, and we're having our uh, – our retreat, our event in Destin, Florida, just a, a few days, a week in April the April the third. Did I see so that at there, a mansion? What's that? Did I see that at a mansion down there? Well, it's not at a mansion. This one isn't. This one is at a Wyndham Resort, the Emerald Grand, right there at the boardwalk in Destin. And so we're going to be there three and a half days. You know, suffering on the mission field and learning some some content, but look at this. I'm a very high D and also a very high I. So in everything that I do, I want to get big results, but I have to get big results while having some amazing fun. And so that's my style blend. And so our events are geared towards those that want to get amazing results and also have some amazing fun. And so I'm really looking forward to that, but I am going to present this content and really dive in depth for three and a half days at our event. And, um, and that's one of the places, that's one of the ways, but I have a master class that I've done that is brief to the point. It's about 40 minutes that I would be happy to send over to those that are interested. They can just get in contact with you and let you know, and then uh, I'll forward that over to you and uh, provide that as just as a value add. That's very kind. So uh, you just said something interesting. You're a high D, but you're also a high I. Yes. And I was thinking as you were, you were, you were speaking just now, you know, yes, I am a high D, but I like to have fun too. In fact, I, I'm not sure if I shared this with you when we first spoke, but I do stand up comedy on the side because oh. I, I don't get enough of people listening to me during the week. I need more, <laughs> on the weekend, more applause and more attention. But the truth is, my favorite thing in life uh, is to help people. And yeah. uh, I believe that stand-up comedy helps people. You, you know, laughter oh, is, sure. great, is great medicine. And uh, I actually had a, a stand-up comedian recently point something out to me, which I'll, I'll share with you because I think it's interesting. I, I was speaking with him. I said, I got to tell you something. There, there's almost nothing I like better than when people laugh at my jokes, when they give me that laughter. And he said, I want you to switch your thinking. Instead of getting laughter, I want you to think about giving laughter. Oh, and it really shifted my perspective. And now, when I take the stage, instead of oh, I can't wait till they give me some laughs, it's like how can I give the gift of laughter to these people? It's a different come from, uh, and uh, it really does make a difference. You know, hey when Jeff, I'm just thinking about this. Why don't we do a deal and you come to our event and do some con comedy for some of our attendees, man? <laughs> I would, I would absolutely love to do that. I certainly can't do it in a couple of days because yeah. <laughs> every every piece of my comedy is filthy right now. But I'm, oh. I'm in the process right now of writing hey. a what's called a clean set that is appropriate for every audience. And sure. I actually uh, have it. I'm going to show you something that um, I actually wrote this down just last night that I need to develop a clean nice. set just for salespeople because one of my intentions is to market that to corporations. Nice. Have annual sales meetings. I'll come in and do 30 minutes of clean sales comedy. And I believe there's plenty of comedy around sales. There's always something we can make people laugh at. We could do something in the future. We have another one in Clearwater Beach, the end of August, that maybe we'll have you come out to. 
Would love to. That'd be great. Uh, you also talk about the need for people to step out of their comfort zone. And yes. I think that certainly myself, I like comfort. Uh, I, I've learned that I need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. But how do you define comfort zone? And why is it so important for people to step out of theirs? And how do they actually do that? Because it is uncomfortable to step out of your comfort zone. You know, we're all we're all that. Thank you for that. We're all naturally wired. We're all naturally wired to do life a certain way. When I learned this system, when I learned DISC, I didn't learn DISC in order to build a coaching and a training business. I learned DISC and I took a deep dive because I was tired of losing. I was tired of losing trusted relationships. I was tired of I would say this mistreating my wife and my children unintentionally. I was tired of losing my valuable clients that I worked so hard to get. And so I had to make the necessary shifts. I have a talk called when shift happens. Now that's clean. Did you hear the when shift? How many recall that wordplay? Hey, when shift happens, when it's time to make that shift, what are you going to do? Look at this. I'm going to show you some. Uh, bring up. Uh, can you show the diagram once again, the disc diagram? I sure can. There you go. Because this is a comfort zone. The D's are comfortable with the eyes because they have the common ground of both being outgoing. Okay. The D's are also comfortable with the C's because they have the common ground of both being task oriented. Let's work together and let's complete a task. The D's will get it done fast and the C's will come back and put all the details and make it correct. Do it the right way. But the D's and the S's, there's not a lot of common ground there. D's are fast paced and task oriented and S's are slower paced and all about the people. They're touchy, feely, love, share, care relationships. So I was tired and out, out, I'm just being transparent. Even as a pastor, I was losing my S's even from our church, from our congregation. You know why? Because I would make this statement. We're going forward with or without you. Hmm. And what would happen? The S's would feel that there was no place for them. And honestly, I didn't value them. Behind closed doors, I would say, man, they're taking up my air. What are they here for? The I's have a hard time connecting with the C's because I's are all about the fun. Let's make it exciting. Everything's happy. While the C's are all about the details and getting things right. When shift happens, when you hit that roadblock of you get sick and tired of losing relationships, of losing clients, of getting the door shut on you, and you wonder what's the deal, what's happened? I got uncomfortable and had to get outside of my comfort zone to learn the secrets on how to effectively connect with each of the four personality styles. And that has enabled me to gain and retain my dream client. And it happened pretty quickly. It happened pretty quickly. But I had to take that deep dive and I had to make those necessary shifts. So we have to be willing to understand, A, not everybody is like us and that our dominant personality style, and I don't mean a, a D, I mean, what we, we're all all four, just like we're all both visual, audio and kinesthetic learners, but we all have a dominant style for yeah. us that it's not necessarily what everybody else has. And we need to understand that we're turning people off sometimes yeah. unintentionally because we're being who we naturally are without considering who they naturally are. Is that, is, well, we have to know ourselves in order to grow ourselves. 
we all start with knowing yourself and then know who your audience is, who is the prospect. And so it's all about you then making that necessary adjustment to where it's not no longer just about me, but it's about you. And then I make that adjustment internally in order to effectively connect with other individuals, regardless of how different they are. One of the things my core values is that I lead, L-E-A-D. The E in, in lead is I embrace diversity. And I say this, I know that we're in a time and a season now that cultural diversity is at the forefront. I said, I don't have to do anything unnatural to embrace cultural diversity, I always have. What I embrace is the diversity of other personality styles. And not just well tolerate, said. but I embrace them. Gotcha. Um, you also talk about the need to avoid burnout by achieving the right work-life balance. And, and I think that's crucial too. You know, I am a driven person. I'm, I, I am a high D, but you know, I love to relax and play. What are some of the things that we should be doing to avoid the burnout that salespeople often do experience? Because I, I always say that sales beats digging ditches in the hot sun. And I don't know that because I never dug hot <laughs> sun in the hot sun, but I'm assuming it's, it, it's easier, but it's not easy. And it's easy to burn out because we face constant rejection. So any advice for developing that work-life balance and trying to avoid the burnout? Empowering team members empowering other leaders, not just hiring, but truly empowering other team leaders, not for the sake of just delegating and off-ramping responsibilities, but empowering them to operate in their best and their highest use. I now have a team where I don't need other D's because my D is strong enough to where I go and I get the job done, I get results, I get the clients. But I have I's on my team that it's a very well balanced. I have S's on my team that bring the support, customer service, that do a lot of the follow-up. And then I have the C's that are putting the details together, that are dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Even for our big event that we have coming up in uh, just seven, eight days. I have on my team C's that are putting all the details together. I believe that the work and the life balance comes whenever you have a very well balanced team and you don't do everything yourself. You know your strengths, you know your weaknesses. I use the term your best in your highest use and you stay in that sweet spot of your best in your highest use. And then you also empower other team members to operate in their best and highest use. Brilliant. That will alleviate the burnout in sales, in job, whatever the case might be. Brilliant. I, I actually uh, had a client for five years. Uh, one of the things I offer is outsourced sales management. I become the sales manager of a company on an outsourced Brilliant. basis. I'm not an employee, but I still do everything a sales manager does. And uh, every applicant got the disc assessment. Nice. Every applicant got the disc assessment. And, and you know, I, I get like, a, I think it's a 22 page report incredibly detailed because we were a looking for the right combination of people. We don't want all high D's. We right. want everybody in the organization because that creates a well-rounded organization. And from a sales management standpoint, it gave me incredibly great insight into how to manage these people because you don't manage a D the way you manage an I or an S or a C. Yeah. Very Can I share a quick story about that? Please do. And I'll finish up with this. My mentor in 1995, was doing a DISC training, same kind of DISC training that I'm going to be doing in Destin, to a group of leaders. And one of the attendees in his training class was the assistant general manager of the Atlanta Braves baseball team. And a couple of months after the training, the assistant GM of the Atlanta Braves calls my mentor, my coach, and he says, hey, I just got promoted. There's a new major league franchise that's being formed called the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I want you to help me put together a team. And he says, oh, you must have heard about my extensive experience and success as a little leaguer. 
And of course, he was just joking. And he goes, but what does this have to do with what I can help you with? And he says, what I want you to help me do is to assess all these players, and we want to field a team with 25 Ds. And he says, no, you don't. He goes, Ds are very dominant, driven. They're not team players. They're demanding. And he goes, but baseball isn't a team sport. You go to bat by yourself. You throw the ball. To, you know, you throw the ball. You don't need someone else to help you. You do it by yourself. He goes, so I want to field a team of 25 Ds. They assessed over 2,500 players, and they narrowed it down to 25 Ds. And within five years, the Arizona Diamondbacks won a World Series championship. They were the quickest major sports franchise to win a championship. And it was done not by statistical analysis that we've seen in the movie Moneyball, that they do it with statistical analysis. It was done through personality analysis. Randy Johnson was part of that team. Kirk Schilling was part of that team. High, high Ds. They were all Ds, but they were assessed and they created a championship team. One mm. of the things I use that same phrase, whenever you let us help you put your team together, we create world-class championship teams. Wow. Wow. I love that. I'm not sure who this is because uh, they didn't connect their Facebook account to streaming, but it says I'm a super high I. And when I learned about disc, I realized I was dating a girl who was a high C and I figured out why we got into arguments all the time. Opposites attract, but opposites also attack. And that's one of the secrets. Typically we marry our opposite. Not all the, not all the time, but that's pretty typical. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. We've been divorced for 16 happy years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're also a certified John Maxwell coach. What does that mean? What is the John Maxwell system? John Maxwell system. I got, I got trained. Actually, I was mentored directly one-on-one -on -one by Mark Cole, John's CEO of all of his organizations. And my foundation and leadership began there, uh, in the John Maxwell team. And that's where I met my mentor who was presenting one of the presenters there at the Maxwell certification who has a uh, leading authority in DISC and who has trained me and I've traveled the country with him. But it all stemmed, it all started there at the Ma Maxwell uh, event, the Maxwell certification. Got it. My friend Chaim says that was a great story. And Jeff Clare has a question for you. He says, since when did baseball become an individual contributor sport? That's news to him. Well... I don't know a lot about baseball. I just know the story. And so that's the way the story was told. But from what I understand is that what was said is that you go up to bat by yourself. You don't need anybody else. Whenever you hit the ball, if it goes to third base, you don't need somebody else to help you field it. You field it on your own. I, I think where Jeff's coming from, though, is... If you only have somebody at first base, you're probably going to miss a lot of those uh, those hits. Uh, so it, it, it it's both an individual and a team sport at the same time. I can see sure. both sides. Um, you've been doing this a while. You know what changes have you seen in, in sales in the last you know, five or six years, and and how can we uh, how can we adapt to them? Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, that's a great question there. Well, what I've seen is that you know the frustration. Even with even with the COVID, with the shutdown, that we've had to make shifts on Zoom calls, on phone calls versus more in person. You and I were probably more in person kind of individuals, and that's what I enjoy doing so much because of the people being so people driven. But we've had to make those shifts, and the connecting with one another is really what it has enabled me to be able to gain and retain these clients. So I've had to make those shifts there, uh, even with adapting to new technology, adapting to new ways <clears throat> of reaching others, new systems. Uh, one of the things that I've done is that even in our classes, in our, uh, in our, in our uh, master classes, I made the shifts from master classes being an hour in length to now doing micro classes that are eight to 10 minutes in length to where I avoid a lot of the stories and I get straight to the point in order to, 
I know my avatar. I know the personality style of my avatar. My avatar is more of the dominant style. Someone just like me because they're the ones that are going to buy. They're the ones that are uh, ready to get the results that they want. That isn't always the case. But so I've created micro classes, micro master classes, and have made those necessary shifts. Yeah, we, we've all had to adapt. Uh, you know, my, one of my very favorite things besides stand up comedy is to do sales training with a live audience because I, yeah. I love that interaction and I use a lot of comedy to keep people involved because when I train, it's usually all day. You know, we start at eight, we're not done till four, and that's a long day. And so you have to keep people engaged. But, you know, when COVID hit, in person sales training died. There was, no, nobody yeah. was getting together. And like you, I've had to adapt to doing it. Uh, I'm now a certified virtual presenter, but you, I can't keep keep people engaged for eight hours. Even three hours is really pushing. And yeah. I try to keep things to like 90 minutes tops. I'd rather break it into three 90 minute sessions right. for, for virtual. And, and but a lot of the things I think that we do in person uh, still apply virtually. You still have to get to know people. You have to understand them and they have to get to know you because people still do people buy from people that they like and trust. And you have to take the time to understand them. And I, I think that the biggest thing is to understand it's almost never about you. It's, it's yeah. really all about them. It, it, when we can get ourselves out of the equation and what we're trying to do, we, we want to close a deal. We want to pay our mortgage and all that stuff. And you look into our boss if, if you have one. It's really about the come from of, of service that, that you started with. It's how do I take great care of you? Uh, and that applies whether you're face to face with people or over the phone, in writing or any place. If you're not coming from the right place, and again, I, I want to repeat the, what you said, and from a place of integrity. If you can't be, have integrity in what you sell, either get out of the business or go find something else to sell. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we've quickly run out of time. I could easily talk to you for hours and hours, but uh, I'm going to share my screen. Would you tell people how they can get in touch with you if they'd, if they'd like to? Well, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook and uh, you could send me a friend request, Aaron Antelon. You see the spelling of my name, A-A-R-O-N. And I want everybody who would want to download and get this. It's a free ebook on three simple secrets to gain and retain your dream clients. Some of you are watching uh, this podcast on uh, on your phone. So unfortunately, the QR code, you're not able, of course, to, to click and scan. But I'll give you the website. It's LegacyLeadership.info forward slash dream clients. LegacyLeadership.info forward slash dream clients. And it's loaded with great content on these three secrets. It'll help you identify the personality style of the predominant personality style of your prospect or your client. And it'll give you some great insight on how to effectively gain and retain them for the long term. So I hope that you're able to grab that absolutely free. Outstanding. And uh, for, for those of you who are listening to this only as a podcast, this is actually a live video broadcast, which streams to Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube at the same time. And uh, Aaron is sharing a uh, QR code for to download his three secrets of how to gain and retain dream clients uh, on the screen. So that's what we're talking about here. Aaron, uh, any, any last advice for the people who are watching and listening? Make the effort, make the adjustment to effectively connect with your prospect and with your client, serve them with integrity. And I know that it would work. It would be a win-win relationship that would be built. And that's what we're all after, win-wins. Just beautiful. Aaron, thank you so much for sharing your brilliance with us generously today. And I do look forward to eventually getting down to one of your events and doing some comedy for you. That would be terrific. And I will end today as I always do. Gang, please remember that sales is a game of making things happen. So get out there and make sales happen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you again, Aaron, and everybody who tuned in and everybody who's listening on the podcast. So long now. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Aaron.